as we take a look at um, determining limits of rational expressions, um, we have to consider the, um, the indeterminate forms of rational expressions uh, that can arise and, and make evaluating the limits a little bit problematic. Um, if we look at this first limit here uh, and try to directly substitute negative 1 in for x, we end up with uh, negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4, over 0. And of course, that is um, to, to be able to evaluate this um, is problematic. Uh, since we have a zero in the denominator. But if we notice that we can rewrite this, and which is a, um, a strategy we learned at the beginning of calc AB, we can rewrite this by factoring out a 2. And then we have x squared minus 1 on the top and x plus 1 on the bottom. And then we can further factor that binomial in the numerator. Um, to uh, x plus 1, x minus 1, all over x plus 1, and then we can cancel. And canceling is effective because it gets rid of the denominator. Um, and that's usually where the problematic component is in the denominator. And so we have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2 times x minus 1. And now we can directly substitute negative 1 in there and um, get a, uh, a finite value. In this case, the finite value is negative 4. So as we rewrite and factor, uh, um, we can, through algebraic manipulation, get a, non, or a finite limit. Um, likewise, if we, if we look at this uh, rational expression, um, we can use um, a strategy where we divide by uh, the highest um, power of the uh, of the polynomial in this case uh, x squared, and um, you know as as we look at this right now, it's it's um, if we put in infinity to the top and to the bottom, um, it, it becomes hard to evaluate. So if we go through and divide by the highest power of that polynomial, we would be dividing every term by x squared. And so I'm going to divide both terms in the top by x squared. I'm going to divide both terms in the bottom by x squared. And when I do that, I can rearrange the expressions so that uh, this cancels out. Uh, x squared over x squared, we have 3 minus 1 over x squared. And this one we have 2 plus 1 over x squared. And so as we take the limit, as we put infinity in for x here, this becomes 0. And we're left with 3 divided by 2, which is a finite value. So we know as we approach infinity that the value of this ratio approaches 3 halves. So graphically, what that's saying is that as we approach x equals infinity, we're going to approach this value of 3 halves. So that's going to look like um, something like, you know, this coming up to, you know, this being asymptotic with 3 halves. So um, as we... Uh, as we look at that, it's, you know, it's coming up like that and becoming asymptotic with, uh, with that line there. Um, and these two strategies are really big strategies that you learned at the beginning of Calc AB. Um, even before you began the calculus-related topics. This last one, um, it's, it's tough to find a strategy for. In fact, if we plug in um, 0 here, we get... Uh, 0 over 0, and we're, start to, we're starting to get into these indeterminate forms that cannot be rewritten. And, um, and so here's 1, 2, here's 3 of those forms right now. 
And really, there are three things that say the same thing, and I'll get into that in just a second, as to why these really are uh, three different ways of writing the same thing. But um, so this this rational uh, expression, we can't rewrite it using the techniques that we learned at the beginning of Calc AB. So we have a different technique um, that we can do, and that technique is uh, involves. Um, it's not that difficult, it just involves taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. And uh, the idea is that where the limit of this rational expression goes to, um, the limits of the derivatives will also go to that same value. So um, that means when we, uh, when we have something that is un indeterminate, which means it has one of these three forms, and there are more forms than this that we'll learn later on, uh, but if it has one of these three forms, then we can use this, uh, this process called L'Hopital's Rule. And L'Hopital's Rule says that the limit of two functions, f of x over g of x, as x approaches some value c, uh, is going to be equal to the limit of, uh, as x approaches c, of the derivatives of those functions. Um, in other words, their, their derivatives will go to the same value as their functions. And since, since the derivatives are just functions themselves, that means the derivatives of those things, when we look at the same limit, c, uh, will go to the same value as well. And so what, what ends up being the case is that we can take the derivatives as many times as we want as long as we have this indeterminate function um, showing up. So we'll try that with this function here. So we take the derivative of the top, and the derivative of the top is 2 times e to the 2x, and the derivative of the bottom is 1. And so, um, and we're going to have x approaching 0. So as x approaches 0 on the original rational expression, we get 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. So we took the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. If we plug in x equals 0 at this point, we're going to get the value 2 over 1, which is no longer indeterminate. That's a finite value. And so we know then the limit, if the limit of the ratio of the derivatives is 2 over 1, then the limit of the ratio of the functions must be 2 over 1 as well. Um, so um, so that's, that's the way we can find the limit of a rational expression um, when it has this indeterminate form. So if we look at then those indeterminate forms, why are they all pretty much meaning the same thing? So if we look at these forms, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, or 0 times infinity. That's really three ways of saying the same thing. So let's take a look at 0 over 0, for instance. Um, how is infinity over infinity saying the same thing? Well, infinity is really 1 over 0. So this is really 1 over 0 divided by 1 over 0. And so 1 over 0 times 0 over 1, right? We take the reciprocal and multiply. When we multiply our tops, we get 0. When we multiply our bottoms, we get 0. So infinity over infinity is really the same thing as 0 over 0. And if we take a look at that last indeterminate expression, 0 times infinity, we can use the same logic. 0 times infinity, or infinity times 0, however you want to write that, is really 0 times 1 over 0 which is really, getting back to this, 0 over 0. So again, even though they say those are three indeterminate forms, those three expressions really um, can be reduced back down to 0 over 0. That's the really the truly indeterminate form. The rationale with dealing with L'Hopital's rule is... Um, is recognizing that we have this indeterminate form of 0 over 0, or as we know, the equivalent expression infinity over infinity, 
or the other equivalent fraction uh, expression 0 times infinity or infinity times 0. And so when we look at this, that's the first thing we do is we plug in the limit and say, do I have these forms? So if we plug in the limit as x approaches a 0, we're going to get a sine of 0 over sine of 0. Uh, and that, that is, in fact, 0 over 0. So we know we have an indeterminate form. We know, um, since we have this indeterminate form, we need to do L'Hopital's on that rational expression. So um, we go ahead then and set up the limit as x approaches to 0, and we take a derivative of sine of a of x. And so the derivative of sine of a of x is a times cosine of x. And the derivative of sine of bx is b times cosine uh, bx. And I should have an a right there. And now as x approaches 0, this is no longer 0. So we can plug that in. We're talking about the limit as x approaches 0 of a times cosine of 0 uh, over b times cosine of 0. And that is just a over b. So for instance, if a were, let's say a was uh, 2 and b was 3, then we would have uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of uh, sine of 2x over sine of 3x. And um, that we know then if we follow this process is 2 over 3. And so as x approaches 0 right here, we get an expression of 2 thirds. With this example, um, again, checking, just making a quick check to, to make sure L'Hopital's is the appropriate method. Um, we substitute infinity in each one of these things, and we get um, infinity over infinity. So we know that we should be using L'Hopital since it is indeterminate. And um, so when we're looking at this um, expression as x approaches infinity of uh, x squared over e to the x, we'll go ahead and take the derivative of each. And um, so taking the derivative of x squared, you get 2x. Taking the derivative of e to the x, you still get e to the x. And at this point, you got to check again. So you plug in the, the limit here, you still get infinity over infinity. So you still have to use L'Hopital's. And that's the nice thing about L'Hopital's is you can use it as many times as you need to. So we take the derivative again. Uh, so derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And at this point, we check and we plug in the limits, and we no longer have an indeterminate form. So uh, we can go ahead and directly evaluate this. So 2 over infinity is 0. And so we know that, that as x approaches infinity, the limit of, of this rational uh, function approaches 0. Uh, for this rational expression, again, just plugging in uh, infinity at the top and the bottom, we can uh, confirm that we have infinity over infinity. So we have an indeterminate form. We can go ahead and use L'Hopital's. And uh, as we take the derivative of the top, uh, that ends up being just 1. And the derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 2. Um, and then after that point, doing a quick step here, uh, we see that we've got a constant in the numerator. So we know we are no longer in the indeterminate form. So we can directly substitute this in. And so we have uh, 1 over infinity, uh, which is, again, 0. So as, as x approaches infinity, the limit of this approaches 0.